G'day and welcome to the first video on solving quadratics using the null factor law. Now in this uh, video I'm making a couple of assumptions um, and the main one is that you know how to factorize um, quadratic trinomials like you know how to factorize these things here. I don't mind whether you use the cross method or splitting the middle term or another method that you've got but you remember or at least after a couple of you know attempts at it you will actually remember how to do um, to, to factorize these because you need that first and then after that we solve. <coughs> so. I guess I'm just going to go ahead with this, but if you need to go back and look at um, a video on um, you know, factorizing um, quadratic tri tri trinomials, then I suggest that you do that first. Okay, so um, how do I factorize this um, here? I mean, I can do it a variety of ways. I'm going to use the cross method, um, x, x, um, 3, and 2. Again, I'm making some assumptions that you know what I'm doing here. That ends up being x plus 3, x plus 2. And the only addition we've got to this is that it equals zero. Okay, what I'm really after is I'm after an x value that will make this equation true. You know, so if x is one, I get one plus three, which is four, times one plus two, which is three, so four times three, which does not equal zero. I need values of x that will actually make this thing equal to zero. Now you can probably see for yourself that if x is negative three, or if x is negative two, then one of these will be zero and therefore both of them will be zero. So the answers to this equation here will be x equals negative three and negative two. There's actually two answers to this. I'll show you how to get these answers a little bit later, but hopefully you've just been able to see intuitively that x is negative, x can be negative three or negative two. Okay, I'll actually teach you the null factor law in a second, but hopefully you can see that. I'm gonna move on to this one over here. Again, I'm gonna use the cross method x and x and for me I'm going to have 7 and 11. I've done these before so I know what the answers are um, so I don't need to sort of fumble around with trying to find out you know what the, the factors are. So then it's going to be x plus 7 x plus 11 equals 0. Now the, the null factor law means that if you've got one thing multiplied by another thing and it equals 0 then one of the things must equal 0. In fact, in this case, you know, both of them actually equal zero, but at different times. The actual null factor law looks like this. If, if A times B equals zero, then A equals zero and B equals zero. No, oh, yeah, I guess we could have an or in here, but it just means that A, equal, A could equal zero or B could equal zero. Um, in this case, both of them will be, but just at different times. So I've got, that is my A, that is my B. So I've got X plus seven equals zero, and I've got x plus one equals zero. And then I can just solve these equations to make them x equals negative seven, and x equals negative one. That's essentially what we did in this problem over here. We just kind of did it a bit more intuitively, but this is how to do it um, mathemat more mathematically. <coughs> so if I move down to the third example, um, x squared minus x minus six, again, I use the null factor law and I get Sorry, I use the cross method, and I get negative three and two. Hopefully you can see that, or at least recognize that, you know, that that's the correct answer. And then I get x minus three, x plus two equals zero. So again, I use the null factor law, and I'm gonna say that x minus three equals zero, and x plus two equals zero. Okay, so that means that x equals three will give me one solution to this question, and x equals negative two will give me the other solution to this question. Okay, I'll move on to this one. Um, x, x, negative three and negative four. So I'm gonna get x minus three, x minus four equals zero. So x minus three equals zero, x minus four equals zero. And so therefore x will be equal to three and x is equal to four. And if you wanna test these, you can actually put these numbers back up into this equation here, and you'll find that zero actually equals zero, which is what we want. Okay, I'll move on to the last two questions here. Again, I'm gonna use the cross method. I get x, x, two, and two. Now, as you can see with this one, I'm gonna get x plus two, x plus two equals zero, which means that's the same as x plus two squared equals zero. So in this case, I'm actually going to go only going to get one answer, 
um, or I guess you can get the same answer twice, x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 2, but we don't need to have the two different answers, we just need to write it once. So um, I'll go from, I'll rub this bit out, and I'll go from, I think I'll rub it out, there we go, yep, uh, we'll go from here. So I've got x plus 2 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, but I actually don't need both of them, I just need 1, so that means that x equals negative 2. Okay, so there's only one answer to this question. Later on when we do graphing I can show you how this fits in a bit more. This example here, I can see that there's a common factor first. And I'm, I'm going to take out that common factor, x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. The beautiful thing about this is that if I've got this 2 here and I want to get rid of it, or if I don't want to have that anymore, I can just divide both sides by 2. If I divide this side by 2, I'm going to get 1. And if I divide this side by 2, it's 0 divided by 2, which is still 0. So the, the great thing is anytime you have a number out the front of a bracket like this and it's multiplied by everything, you can just get rid of it or you know just divide it by 2 and, you know, and it vanishes. Once it's vanished, this bit here looks exactly the same as this bit up here. So therefore the answers will be exactly the same. So x equals negative 2 for this case. I hope that that's um, helped you um, yeah, to, to do some of these. Um, one last little trick that I'll show you that, that occasionally comes up. Um, I'll just put this as number seven. X, X plus three equals zero. Again, we can still use the null factor law for this one. So it can sometimes be a little bit of a trick and people get confused. It means that X equals zero or X plus three is equal to zero. So we still get our two answers just looks a little bit different than what we've done before but essentially it's the same kind of idea okay so hopefully that's helped you to do um, the quadratic uh, solving quadratic trinomials um, in the next video I'll look at completing the square thanks for watching